For 25 years, the Deschutes Brewery has been producing award-winning microbrews. In fact, they currently produce the nation's favorite craft porter. Let's meet the man that started it all. Gary, I'm so honored to meet you. I've been drinking your beer now for about two decades. In 1988, did you have any idea that the pub in downtown Bend would grow to this? Oh, heavens no. We, you know, really all we started was a pub. My background was the restaurant business. We just wanted to make a little bit of good beer, some good food. Our business plan said we could make a tidy living, raise a family in a, in a beautiful town like Bend. And that was really all we planned on. This is the room that started all, right? This is the room. This it's is the original, original 50 barrel uh, JV Northwest brew house that we put in in 1993. And we continue to grow and, and, and put in a lot more modern operation. Now, I've never been to a brewery that had a room like this. This is where our trained panel uh, does this every single day, five days a week. Our technician on the other side of the wall can put down whatever beers they want tasted and analyzed on that date, and then the computer screen will prompt the taster with questions that they can then answer that are all compiled on the computer. So you've got the quality control, but really all about the product too, right? It's absolutely about the ingredients and uh, you know what we have here is a, a, a really a display of what the ingredients are whether it's uh, malted barley, herbs and spices, we have some coriander and a little bit of orange peel here. This uh, particular hop is Centennials. It's kind of embarrassing but I kind of need a restroom right now. Well if you need a restroom we've got one over here. So oh, cool. Right, right behind this door. Thank you. Oh my. All right, that might be the coolest restroom I've ever been in in my entire life, but there is no restroom. The well, if you wanted either. a bathroom, they're over there. Oh, this is a restroom. This, this is a restroom. This, this is where we come for our breaks. So everybody gets a pint or whatever after their shift. They, everybody gets a shift pint uh, at, after they're finished with work. These tanks are quite impressive. Yeah, these Different are... Different sizes. Uh, you can kind of see Wherever we are, this is the old roof line that was our old building. You can kind of chart our growth, as you said, by what size tanks we were buying at the time. See, you got that? Just like that. That is so cool. Don't you kind of feel like we're on the burning Shirley right now? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Now, for some reason, every time I talk about beer, I get thirsty. It's unbelievable how that happens, but this is what all the hard work is for. So, this is America's favorite craft porter, and it happens to be mine. I didn't ever drink dark beer back in the day until I went to your pub in Bend, and I tried the Deschutes Black Butte Porter, and I loved it. We keep saying Black Butte Porter is the beer that, that really dispels all the myths about dark beer. People love it, women love it, men love it. It is really the beer that uh, we think once people can get past the color, it, it's a beer to fall in love with. Cheers. Cheers. Coming up, a colorful art show in the high desert and a world-class year-round resort. Timing is everything. We were lucky enough to be in Bend, Oregon on the weekend of Art in the High Desert, one of the top 15 art shows in the country. Carla, take us back. How did this all start? This started with, with five people, four of them artists. We wanted a really good art show because we knew Bend needed it, deserved it, and would love it. We all put in $200 and with $1,000, we started this show. Obviously, the people are coming up to support it. I see oh. hundreds of people all over the place. Yeah, we've got people now that come to Bend just for this weekend. You mentioned you're an artist. I saw you doing a transaction over there. You're, you're not just the director, you're also one of the participants. Yeah, I'm sort of schizophrenic this time of year. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm also trying to sell art and be a, you know, and be a jeweler. The location is fantastic. I love the new district down here. I used oh, to come here years ago and they've re this has grown up. On really, really hot shows, I've noticed, I've looked out and seen artists floating down the river. Going, Taking a break? And I've gone, what? Get back in your booth! <laughs> <laughs> this is Amy. She's all the way here from North Carolina. Yeehaw! What do you oh, think wait, of that's this? Texas, right? <laughs> no, they say that in North Carolina too, I think. Yeah, they do. What do I think of this? Yeah. I want to move here. It's gorgeous. Isn't it nice? Plus, I've had 
like the three consecutive days of fabulous hair. Your stuff is fun. Thank you. What's I call the inspiration? Them, what, what do you call it? I call them Phobots, short for found object robots. And they all have a name, a number, a date of birth, and like the Tin Man, they all have a heart inside. Which is your favorite of these? My favorite, Me Upon My Pony on My Boat, which is a song by Lyle Lovett. This is an old toy boat, uh, spice tins, a pool ball, wire brush, funnel, a sash lock, wrenches, little feet are buttonhole attachments. This is David, who used to live in Oregon for many right. years. Now you live in Austin, Texas. Right. Uh, this is an amazing show. It, it brings together so many people from across the country. I mean, the best artists in the country are out here right now. Your art. All this by pencil. It is. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, well, it, I, it is a little bit obsessive. Uh, <laughs> I, I call it my obsessive compulsive disorder with a pencil. It's just what I do. How and, long have you yeah. been doing it? Uh, this kind of worked for about 35 years. Like the elephant one blows my mind that uh. it's all pencil. And that picture with the depth there, <laughs> I, I just love it. This is Dakota. He wins the award for the most colorful, crazy, fun art that we've seen all day. How did you get into doing this? There's all these bottle caps yeah, and this you know, is I had a, fun. I had a barrel full of caps um, 12 years ago and I was doing these sculptural wood, you know, functional uh, sculptures so I wanted to make it look metal. That was the uh, initial thought. And then you've got like a dolphin tail over there, you got a cactus yeah. that representing Texas and a bowl. Yeah. What's your favorite piece? Uh, you know, I just did this, this large elk head and that's my favorite piece. Central Oregon offers 30 unique and challenging golf courses designed by some of the world's best golfers and designers. Golf Digest named Central Oregon one of the top 25 places in the world to play golf. Golf enthusiasts planning a trip to Central Oregon can get free travel planning and concierge assistance either by phone, live chat, or by visiting GolfCentralOregon.com. The Sun River Resort is a year-round resort ideal for families and friends. Now, Scott, you're the general manager here. You've been here about six years. Uh -huh. I used to come here probably 10 to 15 years ago with my friends from Portland, and we had a blast. There's so much to do, but you've got a lot more going on right now, a lot of enhancements. We do. Over the years, the resort has added quite a bit of, in regards to amenities and offerings and activities. Uh, everything from uh, remodeling our guest rooms to um, the new uh, homeowner aquatic center labeled the Shark. It's beautiful. It's got indoor pool that's obviously heated year round, an outdoor aquatic park with with slides and lazy rivers and kiddie pools and lap lanes. People like to eat. You guys have some pretty good restaurants here too. We do. We have nine dining outlets throughout the resort. Everything from upscale. We just added a new beer garden uh, outlet this summer. I always found my way to the owl's nest. Mm -hmm. Live music. Yeah. fun environment. I see kids everywhere, yeah. people of all ages, all the way to grandparents, just really enjoying each other. This is a really special place. From golf to bike riding, uh, that, that in and of itself with 35 miles of pristine bike trails throughout the town of Sun River and, and all adjacent to the to the uh, Deschutes River. We have over 400 bikes in our in our bike rental um, shop. I'm kind of dying for a workout. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that's good for me to do next. This is Rob, he's the Director of Recreation. Let's go biking. Let's do it. Rob, I had no idea of the interesting history of this place. I yeah. thought it was just a big ski resort, you know, that was built in like the 80s. No, there's a lot more to it. But back in the uh, 40s, 43 and 44, you know, during World War II, you've probably heard of that. I have heard of that, actually. Yeah. The, uh, this was uh, an installation for the Army Corps of Engineers. But this building uh, actually was the Officers Club. That's cool, man. Yeah. Carry on, soldier. All right, all right. This is beautiful. You know it. The Great Meadow, we call it. Well, Obviously, there's a lot more going on than just biking here. There's so many activities here that you really need multiple vacations. This is the ideal family resort. I've never seen anything like it. And we see so many kids and brothers and sisters and parents and grandparents. This is the best family resort I think I've ever seen. John, as the director of recreation, you just said the best phrase I've heard in a long time. We had a great day here at the Sun River Resort. Yeah. We got some biking in, some exercise, we learned some history, and tonight we cap it off in this beautiful, serene marina for the Family Fun Float. Tom, what is the Family Fun Float? The Family Fun Float is a, um, 
uh, float we came up with this year where we invite uh, families to come. Float three miles down the river on rafts. Uh, takes about an hour, hour and a half, and it culminates with s'mores and a cowboy sing-along. And one of the things you probably noticed from your time here is there's an atmosphere of uh, tranquility indeed in the vernacular of our youth. It's a, a chill place to be. I can't think of a better way to describe the Sun yeah. River Resort. Up next, whitewater rafting on the mighty Deschutes and a party not to be missed. Central Oregon is stacked with adventure opportunities. Today, we're whitewater rafting on the Deschutes River with Sun Country Tours. So we're at the Big Eddie Thriller here. This is kind of the main event, the section. Part two and part three are the highlights today. And you guys can see here the giant kind of V going down the river. It's kind of a little hydrology 101. What's happening is the left lateral is kind of the dominant one and it's pushing the water into the rocks. So our idea today is to stay away from the rocks. So we're gonna have a little bit of angle there. It's kind of picking on the right side of the raft. So as we go down, we're just paddling aggressive all together, smiling, having fun. We're gonna keep it straight and kind of go right through the third part, Sow's Hole, which is kind of a, a mild tsunami, a soft bucket of water coming at you, and just kind of prepare for that and have fun. Big Eddie on three, one, two, three. Big, Big Eddie! Eddie! What was it like going in the water? Because you look kind of scared, man. First, I know your mommy first was scared. I was scared. I was, I, I, my, it was, it was so shallow that my feet were touching. They were. What'd you think of the big Eddie? You didn't fall in there. How was that? It's just a wall of white. Pretty much, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Would you tell your friends to come and do this? Once they saw the big, the big Eddie, they would turn around and go back. You think so? But you didn't. <laughs> High five, buddy. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> This is Scott, our fearless guide. You were awesome, man. Hey, thank you. You prepped us well for the Big Eddie. Yeah. That's a fun trip, man. It's an awesome trip. It's kind of our uh, shorter whitewater experience. It's a teaser for all the other great trips that we offer. What other tours do you guys offer? So we offer a half day trip on the Mackenzie River. Um, it's a great family fun trip. Class twos and threes mixed in. And then of course I failed miserably because I fail in backwards. On the first wave, man. Kinda and it happens. I mean, that's the way to go. And you know, we kind of set you up a little bit there to give you a experience. Alaska Airlines began service to Roberts Field in 1982 and proudly continues to offer service to the high desert paradise of Redmond, Bend and the surrounding areas. On all Alaska Airlines flights into Roberts Field, you'll receive Starbucks coffee and complimentary Northwest beer and wine. For more information on destinations, airfares, and their award-winning mileage program, visit alaskaair.com. We're in town for the Ghost Tree Invitational, followed by dinner on the range back here at the Sun River Resort. It's a golf tournament, it's a charity event, but really, it's just an excuse to have some fun. This is Josh, he's originally from these parts, now living in LA, right. doing an awesome job as MC of this event. This is quite the event, my friend. I love this event. This is, I think, my fifth or sixth year doing it, and as long as they'll have me, I'll be here, because it's, it's a spectacular location. You can't beat it. The food is incredible. So it started as a golf tournament yesterday. Yeah. I, I kind of bill it as a golf tournament with an excuse to have a really good party. Pretty much, pretty much, yeah. It's, um, I mean, we get people coming from all over the Northwest to play the tournament, because we play at Crosswater, which is a, uh, a, a Sun River owned uh, property. And the whole goal is to raise money for? Well, we got the uh, Boys and Girls Club of Central Oregon. We just ran into Ronald McDonald. Excuse me, I have to go over <laughs> He didn't have any food. No food, Josh. Oh, he didn't? No, oh, he didn't have any fries. burgers or anything. Oh, man. Well, we ran into him, so the Ronald McDonald House is also one of the best. Ronald McDonald House, that's right. I think it's probably one of the most unique and fun ways to raise money that I've ever seen. We actually attended the golf tournament yesterday and witnessed something very cool. Check this out. 
Well, basically, uh, I'm gonna rip a 400 plus yard drive for you on this hole, a uh, super long par five. I am a, uh, I'm a four-time Remax finalist, currently ranked fifth longest hitter in the world. Uh, when I'm not competing, I travel all over the world, uh, hitting for charity events just like this one. Today, uh, we're accepting donations to play my tee shot. Uh, the proceeds raised on this hole go to benefit the, the Ronald McDonald House. That's what this tournament's all about. Have you ever seen a guy hit a ball that far? I have never seen anybody hit a ball that far. It was amazing. Now talk about cool gigs. This guy just yeah. travels all over the world and hits golf balls. Josh raised a ton of money for the charities Good. too, so that's awesome. Good. And then tonight we're here at this great party. This yeah. is kind of the party of the year in Central Oregon. It absolutely right? is. It absolutely is. And there's some great parties around here, but this one is the creme de la creme. Who better to talk about Central Oregon than the CEO of the Central Oregon Visitors Association, Alana? I think what we deliver is a very um, chic, authentic, experiential opportunity for vacations, but still in a community that's small enough to be incredibly welcoming and, and just very um, warm and generous of nature of the people who live here. Now, we've spent a lot of time in Bend and Sun River. We love it, but there's a lot more to see here, right? There is, and that's the beautiful thing about Central Oregon as a destination. Yes, Bend and Sun River are the heart of it, but within an hour's drive, you can have an entirely different geographic and cultural experience. What's your favorite Central Oregon memory? For me, it's all about the people. Um, we have 300 days of sunshine and unlimited outdoor recreation, but it's the people who live here that embrace our visitors, that make this something that's really, you just don't want to miss it. Coming up on Next Stop, a fantastic musician with an even better story. Lee Cook is our featured musician on Next Stop Central Oregon, and he is cooking up some serious tunes tonight at the Silver Moon Brewing Company right here in downtown Bend. And you and your wife and your baby girl are living the dream, my brother. We're living our dream. Um, it's not everybody's dream, but yeah, we get to uh, drive all over the country playing music, taking pictures, and raising our daughter. So you had, you had a really killer place in Temecula. You dumped that a few weeks ago, you bought an RV, and that's how you guys are living. That's what I mean living. That's our home, home on wheels, yeah. What, has it been fun? It's been a blast. And, uh, you know, people, especially considering Jolene, our little baby, like, oh, she must be so confined, but we pull up at parks and let her crawl around. And I think, you know, uh, it might sound kind of cheesy, but the world is our oyster. On the road, and we'll keep on driving. Take a truck stop for the night Feel my pulse With your head at my chest Tell me everything is fine And thank the Lord Cause we ditched the devil Left him 3,000 miles behind Then we can't know for sure How this journey will unfold So we show up at these places with contentment on our faces we can hope for the best but i know we will be tested there's no promise of success so remember that we're blessed just as we are just as we are so where did you get this soulful disposition in music man you just bring it you got such an energy on stage um it was really due to my parents uh, preference in music listening to motown a lot and i mean everything from you know motown to led zeppelin and credence clearwater revival and and then my mom was really into more the jazzy you know nat king cole or the rat pack guys what do you think of ben this is your first time to bend oregon you like central oregon 
Everybody that we've met is super sweet. Um, any questions we have, they, they want to sit down and not just tell us in passing, but actually like, oh, well, let me tell you my favorite thing to do. And um, everybody's been so, so great and welcoming. So we're going to be back. We're going to make this an annual, annual stop for sure. Through the darkest of days, let your light fall at my feet. Well, I thank God for this very day The life I live is a gift to me I don't intend to waste it Bend, Oregon recently coined Beer Town USA. Today we take a tour of some of the pubs with Let It Ride. Hey guys, I'm Kim. I'll be your tour guide today. Welcome to Let It Ride Electric Bike Tours. Today we're going on the Brew Pub Tour, Woo! so hopefully that's what you signed up for. As soon as you're on the bike and feeling safe and secure and ready to go, you hit that red button. Everybody needs to check first. Most important, make sure your bell works. Oh, yeah. Okay guys, actually this is a pretty small place inside. Should we so. all like put each other on each other's shoulders to get oh, in there? That might be a good yeah, idea, huh? <laughs> yes. No, 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 no. I was don't going do for it. <laughs> <laughs> that's why they call it chicken bites. She was gonna do it, I like it. <laughs> This is, everyone gets stamps on the on the trail, right? Yeah. Yours has to be the biggest. It is the biggest, and it also works really well on arms. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Will that stay for the whole week? Uh, for at least three years. <laughs> three years. It's kind of like an ultimate henna. So where's next? Okay, we're gonna head to Crux Brewery, and this place is known for fantastic appetizers and a wonderful view of Mount Bachelor. So this is probably the most unique and cool beer bottle I've ever seen. On the label of the Tough Love, you know, it's kind of that um, oxymoron, of, you know, tough and love. How can you have the two at the same time? <laughs> so we got Double Cross, Tough Love. Better um, Off Red, the Banished off. Better Off Red, and the Freak Cake. So this is a this is actually your love story. I don't know if you know this or not, right? Did you guys name this after my yeah, so love story? All right. Cheers. Here's to good beer and good times. To Tough Love. To Tough, tough Love. love. Tough love, but not tough tasting. So my whole life, <laughs> I've been searching for the good life. Found it. And I finally found it. We are in the good life. In the good life. What makes this the good life? Um, well, it's a local brewery here in Bend, and the good life is just having fun, being outside, uh, grabbing your can of beer, your your bottle of beer and taking it with you, either it be hiking, camping, skiing, snowboarding, whatever you want to do here. There's awesome, amazing opportunities to get outside and drinking beer is part of that. It is part of that. And I love the garage doors that are opened up right now. It's a yeah. nice day. Everyone's having fun. They're enjoying yep. the, and have, good the good life. life. You all actually live the good life. This is the appropriate name for a brewery. You Absolutely. guys live the good life here. Cheers to that. Cheers to the good life. Coming up on Next Stop, world-class golf and snow skiing in Central Oregon. What makes golf in Central Oregon so special? From high mountain to high desert, you won't find a better variety of courses anywhere. Today we'll visit a few of its premier destinations. Crosswater Club in Sun River is one of those bucket list courses you definitely want to play when you come out here. Josh, this place is very special. What is really special about the place is we're built on 600 acres in our gated community of which 200 acres are designated for the Owners Association, leaving us 400 acres, which 200 is the bent grass golf course and the other 200 are native wetlands and fescues. This hole might be the longest hole I've ever seen in my life. 
This is the longest hole I've ever played personally. So. How long is this hole? Tell us about this hole. How do you, how do you play this hole? It's 683 yard par five and it takes uh, three really great golf shots to get there and when you get up there you're going to notice the green isn't the biggest green in the world either. Really? Because I don't think I would play from this tee box. I think I'd play from that one way up there. And I would go with you. <laughs> We're now at Tetherow, just outside of Bend, but I gotta say, this kind of looks like Scotland is. Well, that's, that's, it's a Scottish Highlands course, so. What does that it, mean? It, it's the style, it's Link style golf. So it's, um, it's tight lies, it's fescue grass, and it's a lot of bump and run. You're leading the trend. Tell us about the golf boards. Well, that's so cool. You know, we like to consider ourselves not your grandfather's country club, so we do things a little bit differently. A golf board is a four-wheel drive, almost like skateboard slash surfboard that will go about 11 to 15 miles an hour. It's just like surfing or it's just like skateboarding. Um, and you put your bag on the front and it's got a bar and you just wiggle into it. I'm so impressed with the diversity of the courses we've seen today in Central Oregon, and Ed Pronghorn is, is no exception. What's you. unique to Pronghorn? Well, I really think it's the quality of golf that we have here uh, with our Nicholas Golf Course and our Fazio Golf Course as well. It's uh, very rare to have Nicholas and Fazio Golf Courses side by side. And you've got the most unique par three on the Fazio Course I've ever seen. We do our eighth hole. It uh, actually incorporates a lava tube uh, that we discovered during the construction of the golf course and actually built the, the hole around that specific feature. It's really wonderful. I love your tee boxes over there, the little pronghorn step. That's, that's super cool. Very unique. Yes. Very unique. So you're from Chicago. <laughs> yes. What do you tell your buddies back in Chicago about living in Central Oregon and golf in Central Oregon? Well, it's, it's just one of the great places in the world to do both. Uh, the real uh, interesting thing about Central Oregon is just the wealth of outdoor activities that are here outside of golf. You hit it on the head. There's so much activity in Central Oregon. There's no excuse to not be in shape here. Absolutely. Let's go exercise. Very good. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Smith Rock is one of the seven wonders of Oregon and the birthplace of modern sport climbing. It's a great place for world-class climbing, family hikes, and amazing views of the Cascades. It's also one of the most photographed features in the state of Oregon. For more information on Smith Rock and the other six wonders of Oregon, go to visitcentraloregon.com. Mount Bachelor in Central Oregon has been rated one of the top 10 ski resorts for families in the United States, and for good reason. This is this is not a small mountain, but there's really something for everybody, Drew. There is, that's one of our big selling points, you know. Very, very large mountain, fifth or sixth largest in the whole United States in terms of acreage, but we do have something everybody. Beginners are happy, our experts are happy on the backside of our mountain on those sunny powder days, so truly something for everyone. So this isn't your average mountain too, we're on a volcano, right? That's right, and that's pretty rare, you know. That's unique to Pacific Northwest skiing in general, but here at Mount Bachelor, you know, we are the tallest resort, ski resort peak in the Cascades, and you do ride the chair to the top of the volcano, which is something that doesn't happen anywhere else. You do not find better spring skiing than this. Yeah, we like to think of ourselves as one of the spring skiing capitals of America because the snow lasts so late into the season. I mean, you'd never know by looking at the place today how late in the season actually is. So many other places go down to dirt by this time of year, but it looks like midwinter here. Okay, so we're at the top of Pine Mountain Express, and Drew, I feel like I'm in a dream. <laughs> yeah. This is so wild. Yeah, here we are. This is technically uh, the middle part of our mountain, mid-mountain, 7,800 foot elevation. And on a day like today, you know, the weather can't make up its mind. It's changing every couple minutes or it so. Makes it makes it fun, though. Keeps yeah, you on your it does, toes. you know, and five minutes from now, hopefully when the sun comes back out, the vistas are amazing from here. Well, I think it's time we do a little shredding. What do you say? <laughs> All right. All right, let's go for it. That was a fun one. That was awesome. Yeah, how about some lunch? We're in the, uh, the shoulder season right now. We're spring skiing, but the summer times are pretty hot here. What's new? You know, we're really excited about summer. It's one of our new ventures that we're diving into, the Downhill Bike Park. We're so stoked that this July, 
and going through the summer months, uh, we'll have downhill bike trails, lift access that uh, we can introduce Central Oregon to, and we think that the community is going to be really hungry, especially in Central Oregon. You oh, know, Central mountain biking's huge. Biking's huge in Central yeah. Oregon. You know, it's taken us five years. It's been a big project with planning and and development, but. Uh, Phase one's done and ready to go as soon as the snow melts, and we're going to be working on phase two as the summer goes on. Tell our viewers why they should come to Mount Bachelor. You know what? It's the full package, Central Oregon. We're a year-round destination now, and in the wintertime specifically, with skiing and snowboarding, you know, it's you've got other things you can do in Central Oregon outside. It's one of the beer capitals of the world. Great places to stay, great places to eat. You sleep at a comfortable elevation, drive up to mountain to ski. It's just the full package. Coming up, off-road adventure, one of our favorite resorts, and wine tasting at a local vineyard. Mountain biking has become the rage in Central Oregon, and for good reason. There's over 300 miles of single track. Mountain biking is just blowing up here, man. Yeah, it sure is. We have, uh, like you said, 300 miles of trail. There is everything from beginner level down near the river to extreme high mountain rocky terrain. And uh, everyone has a good time here on bikes. So what kind of trail is this? This doesn't seem like a beginner trail to me. Yeah, we, <laughs> we took you on one of the harder trails in Penn today. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And I felt yeah. that way. I felt yeah. like a complete novice. Yeah, a lot of rocks, a lot of roots. So how long would it take me to get proficient on a trail like this, realistically? Yeah, totally. There's, uh, if, you're, if you get into mountain biking, uh, the progression can be pretty fast, just because it is so fun. You can ride beginner trail, and as soon as your fitness is going, you can do maybe 15 or 20 miles in a, a three hour ride. So how long have you been riding? Uh, I started riding when I was 14. In so just a few years now. Yeah, <laughs> it's been, <laughs> gosh, I guess 20 something years You just now. told us you're right. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah. No, it's, yeah, it's great. I love riding and it keeps me, keeps me fit, keeps me going. Bend is a great place to live if you're an athlete or if you're just an outdoor enthusiast. Yeah, thanks for this. This was awesome. Yeah, good. We're so honored to partner once again with our good friends, and this is absolutely my favorite resort in the world, the Sun River Resort, located in Sun River, Oregon. There's a lot of great things going on at Sun River right now. Uh, we've actually just uh, almost finished all of the room renovations, so we've upgraded all of our accommodations. So whether it's a shorter visit and you want to stay in our, our lodge accommodations, or if you're going to be here for a full week or a little bit beyond that, we have plenty of homes that we rent as well, uh, anywhere from a two-bedroom home up to a six-bedroom home comes with a full kitchen, full dining room, and it's very convenient and comfortable for families that are gonna be here enjoying all the activities that we have throughout this year. How big is this resort? Because you can get lost. It is, it's very large. Uh, we actually sit on uh, 3,300 acres. Uh, so it's quite large and it spans anywhere from private neighborhoods all the way down to the river where we have a marina, horse stables, and our own airport as well. That's awesome. I love the fact you really don't even have to leave Sun River. If you're here, you can stay for a week. You've got grocery stores, you've got restaurants, you've got pubs. The Owl's Nest is a fun pub. We do. Both the Meadows and Owl's Nest is right here in, in our lodge for anybody that is looking for uh, Pacific Northwest uh, dining here, as well as we have a variety of other uh, establishments within the village. This looks amazing, Chef. Thank Nicely you. done, nice preparation. Uh, what we have here is baby arugula tossed in a blood orange vinaigrette, some roasted beets, pickled beets, pickled onions, candied walnuts, and juniper grove goat cheese. Mostly locally sourced? Mostly, yes. Like it? Uh, the entree we have done is salmon that's been wild caught, it's been seared, it is with a vanilla bean, saffron, blanc. And for dessert, we're gonna finish it up with Maryberry cobbler with black truffle ice cream, caramel apple, bread pudding, vanilla bean, uh, creme brulee. 
I want to bring my family back here this summer. Tell us about the family activities. Oh, there's plenty to do, especially uh, for families here. Not only do we have the marina, people can go out on rafting tours or kayaking, but we also have our, our bike barn, so if you want to grab some bikes and go out for adventure for the day, there's plenty of bikes to be had. Uh, and also we have kids' activities, so we have a uh, camp fun again. So if you want to drop your kids off for the day and, and really get them involved with activities and, and nature, hikes, and things like that, it's a great destination. And then, of course, while you're dropping the kids off, it's a great time for mom and dad maybe to hit the spa as well. Yes, so, that's what I was going to talk about. <laughs> Sage Springs is a great destination for us to relax and, and plenty of treatments, great massage therapists. And if you want to sneak in a workout, we have a great workout facility as well there. We offer everything from massage to body treatments, facials, waxing, and nail services. Um, some of my favorites, the Spa Abiyanga, which is a warm oil body uh, massage. The ultimate experience. One of my favorite things is the jacuzzi in the men's locker room. I feel like I'm outside at Smith Rock with the stars beaming down and the birds chirping. That is so relaxing. It is relaxing and the hot tub is also saline so it's easier on your skin, you're more buoyant, um, you have that transfer of salt which is detoxifying and one of my favorite things is the lighting in there. The lighting was designed to uh, mimic sunsets and um, sunrises in Central Oregon. I've been known to indulge in good wines, and I also love a good story. Today we find both at Marigus Winery, located just outside of Redmond, Oregon. And Doug, this is relatively new to this area, but your family has been in making wines for years and years. Talk about that. Well, um, I was introduced to it by my grandmother, and uh, she started making wine and brokering wine grapes in 1941 out of Lodi, California. And my grandparents were all immigrants, uh, so they were very headstrong on don't work as hard as we did, and the only way you're gonna do that is by getting educated. So how did you find this property? This is just it's such a stunning setting. Well, um, you know, it, it was um, happenstance. Uh, we were looking for the perfect spot. Drove on to the farm, and it wasn't, what, 200 feet down the drive when my mouth dropped. Now uh, you've got Smith Rock, which is a beautiful state park that you're looking at to the south and literally we look at seven peaks of the Cascade. So I thought, well, that's great. And then I looked at the land and there was a south facing slope and that's what I wanted. Um, the soil was perfect, it's volcanic loam, which drains really well, which the grapes like. The only rest of it was to pay the bill. I found it very interesting that, you know, I, I think of Southern Oregon, I think of the Willamette Valley for sure. obviously wine growing regions, but I didn't think of Central Oregon. This is a, kind of a pleasant surprise that you can actually grow grapes out here. Yeah, and you know, um, a lot of people, um, there was a large faction of naysayers that you could not do that. Uh, we're not at the finish line yet, but it's great to know that what people said that would not be able to be accomplished has been accomplished. We're gonna go for reds if that's okay with you. And that's okay. Let's start with this one. It's called Good Earth Malbec. Uh, Malbec is really becoming a popular grape and there's a really good reason for that. Um, ours is, um, very rich for uh, most Malbacs like that come out of Argentina. Thank you. I left it uh, on the lees for a long period of time, nine months. See what you think. Oh, that's nice. Thanks. Um, and in here, we don't hydrate the winery, so that means a lot. We lose a lot of wine, but it gets more dense and more, more flavorful uh, as time goes on in those barrels. That's rich. Yeah, definitely. I that's like it. I like all of them. You've definitely hit the nail on the head in it. Central Oregon. Oh, what a thanks. pleasant surprise. What do you, you say to the people who are the naysayers when you said, ah, you can't do this? Well, uh, my mother told me to be polite. <laughs> <laughs> the proof is in the pudding, you know, and come on in and enjoy it. When Next Stop returns, I tackle a new hobby in a gorgeous mountain river. I've heard for years that Central Oregon has some of the best fly fishing in the world. Let's reel in some more information with Stillwater Fly Shop. Welcome to our office here. Welcome to Central Oregon. We're gonna teach you a little bit about fly fishing today in the, the backyard that we call home. You mentioned the key word, little, which is what I know about fly fishing. Okay. I know very little about fly fishing. <laughs> Well, that's all right. We'll, we'll cover some of the basics today about casting, presentation, what we're trying to, to do so that, you know, maybe we'll pick up some fish. So what we're going to do is we're going to get you into some Gore-Tex waders. 
Do I look the part? You look the part. You look like you know what you're doing now. I'm feeling good. I'm ready to get my fly fish on. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Um, we'll go down into this one area that's kind of behind us. What's this river? This is the Fall River. And it's one of the spring creeks that are in central Oregon. There's two major ones, the Metolius and this. It is so clear. I don't think yeah. I've ever seen a river so clear. So let's Beautiful. just go ahead and go on down into this area over here and we'll uh, we'll do a little casting 101. Okay. The basis of it is that you're gonna have what's called uh, right above you is 12 o'clock. Okay. In front of you, we want to stop the rod tip at about 10 o'clock. Behind you, 2 o'clock. So out. am I letting go of this or am I hanging on to Eventually this? you will. Just hang on to it for now. So 10 to 2. 10 to 2. There you go. Keep going. Back and forth. Yep. Hey, you got it, John. So John, we're going to fish this area right in here. Um, you can kind of see some of the landmarks where fish will be holding. So we have this really light green area over here and then kind yep. of a darker green up above it with uh, um, fast water. So for the most part, what's going to happen is the fish comes up. You'll see the fish come up, rise and grab it and pull back down. Yeah, then what do I do? <laughs> that, that, once we get to that part, then we'll talk through that. So that's a good cast right in there because it's moving up into it. Thank you. I had no idea that we get to go for a nice hike too, Paul. Yeah, absolutely. That's kind of the enjoyment of it as well. You get to see a different part of the scenery. And so kind of the same thing what we did before is we're going to fish kind of this area right in here. Right into that section right there. So Paul, besides guiding fly fishing, what else do you guys do as a company? Well, primarily we're a, a fly fishing store. So we, I would say about 90% of everything that we sell retail wise, rods, reels, waders, boots, coats, etc., is uh, done through e-commerce. Paul, I think I found a new hobby. I do too. I thought you did really well. You picked up the sport really quickly and um, it looks like you were enjoying yourself. I had a great time. You know, this isn't about catching fish for me. It would have been nice, but it's not necessary. This is about meeting new friends and being at one with Mother Nature. This is just gorgeous. I agree 100%. Thanks for coming out. We appreciate it. Thanks, Paul. Golfing in Central Oregon is spectacular. Today, we visit one of its premier courses. The first thing that really jumps out is the landscape. You guys built this around the Central Oregon topography. Talk about that. Absolutely. Uh, John Harbottle, a uh, architect of, of some note, um, designed the golf course 10 years ago. Um, took the, the natural topography and, and weaved a, a challenging yet fun golf course uh, amongst the lava rocks and the juniper trees. This is a municipal course. I, have, I don't think I've ever seen a muni that is this gorgeous. It Thank is you. just lush and green. And it's very affordable. You mentioned that anybody can come to play. Absolutely. Our uh, top rate is $65. Um, That's awesome. We drop down from there. Uh, you can get a $20 rate if you're willing to play at this time of night when uh, maybe it's a little quieter. This uh, is the time to play. And this is the time to play. All right, let's play. All right, let's do it. So tell us about the 12th hole, Lee. Funnest hole in Central Oregon. You can make a two for an eagle. If you're like you and I and 95% of most golfers, you try to drive it on the green. I'm gonna let you go first. All right. Great chance of being on the green. If you don't fly the lava rock, you could end up anywhere. So hit it solid. And then it doesn't become the most fun hole on the course. Unless I'm gambling with you and then it's good for me. <laughs> All right. Play for a beer. Show me the way. Game on. Game on. Got it. Straight. Nope. <laughs> Looks like someone's getting a beer, and that someone is not me. <laughs> so you say the greens are fast. They can get really fast. 
Uh, right now they're probably rolling right about 10, which uh, 10 and a half, which is a, a good speed for players of all caliber. Certainly fast enough for, for everybody. You definitely don't want to get above the hole. Good advice. Which you've stayed below the hole here, so knock hey, it in for birdie. I know what I'm doing. This is for birdie. Oh, good putt. I'll take a par. Oh, that's too Looks hard. Good. Oh! <laughs> I'm going to have to have you putt this guy. <laughs> I'd make me putt this. <laughs> there you oh. go. So you putt left-handed but you drive right-handed, what's up with that? I'm easily confused and uh, just found a putter that works, so I'm sticking with it. What's not confusing is that I owe you a beer. And I like that. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, thanks for coming out Thank and playing. You. It was awesome. Great round of golf. Coming up on Next Stop, we experience one of Oregon's seven wonders with Chalkstone Climbing Guides. Today we're at Smith Rock State Park, one of the seven wonders of Oregon for a little climbing 101. So before we get climbing, I got a little gear for you. This harness will work for you. We'll put this on down there. And then the main thing to do here is find a pair of rock shoes that fits you. You don't want them to be painful because then you're not going to be able to focus on climbing, but shouldn't have any wiggle room in there. We can head on out. We're going to climb at a cliff called the North Point, which is out that way. So this is a good climb for us to start on, John. This is a beginner climb, huh? You call this a starter climb. I do. For, for beginners. I think you'll like this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first thing we'll do is get your helmet on while we're hanging out under the cliff, and that'll just protect us from anything that might fall off the cliff or if someone's up there. So I'll give you that, and you can just use that latch to adjust it. So John, the knot we use to tie ourselves to the rope, it's called figure eight follow through. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a fold in the rope there, like that, I'll make, create a loop poke it through and that gives me a knot that looks kind of like the number eight. Are you psyched to climb? Ready? I'm a little nervous but you know I'm, in, I'm stuck to do something different. Well the key is just to take your time. John you're on belay. On belay? Can I climb? You can climb. Have fun. Take your time. And this part might be the crux of the climb and it really relies on you using your right foot on a tiny foothold, maybe by your right knee. I just want everything to grab onto. Trust that foot. Nice, and now you got a good left foot if you look down. Awesome, you're through the worst of it, John. And a work to your right will be easier, I think. Yeah, walk those feet over. Nice, John, you got it. All right. I got you. Good job. So now you can let go and sit back on the rope. Right here? Yep, I got you. You can hold on to your knot if you want to hold on to something. Good work, John. Get your feet under <laughs> you there. Get Thanks, your land legs. Good job. Hey, if I can do it, you can do it. Coming up, Central Oregon's Eagle Crest Resort, including a spectacular 18-hole mini golf course. I try my hand at fly fishing, and we kick off America's greatest county fair. This is our first time at the Eagle Crest Resort, and I gotta tell you, Taylor, this is, I'm not sure resort does this place justice. This is way more than a resort. It's, it's rather large. Um, How resorts, large? The, the resort in total is 1,700 acres. We have three huge developments with four to five different residential communities within those developments. And as you can see here, this is one of our sports centers. We have three of these on property, so there's just a lot going on. A lot going on for families. I mean, this place just screams families. I see husbands and wives and kids all over this place. Oh, yeah. What is there for them to do? 
there's a ton, uh, especially in the central Oregon area, there's a lot to do. But here on property, we have over 15 miles of hiking and biking paved trails. We have the Deschutes River that comes down. We have trails that go right through there. Uh, you guys have a lot going on here, but I noticed you also have a spa. I'm sure your wife we likes do. the spa. Yeah, we just remodeled the spa recently, um, added some more treatment rooms, made it a little bit, uh, have more of a spa feel to it. Uh, and that's another great activity as well. So send the wife to the spa, guys head out to the golf course, kids come to the pool to play. How would you describe the top attribute of the whole resort? Like what's number one on your list? Well, for me personally, I'm a golfer. So I love that there's three courses here. I love the variety that that entails. But also I have four kids that are six years or under. So I love that there's a ton of things for them to do. Um, everyone can have fun. It's not just for me, it's not just for the kids. Both the adults and the kids can have a really good time. Well, you and I have something in common. We both like golf. Yep. I'm gonna go meet Ron and do some putting. Perfect. So Ron, Taylor mentioned there, you guys have an 18 hole putting course here, but this is like crazy cool. Well, it is. You know, we wanted something that was gonna be more radical and less traditional than your normal everyday, you know, quote, putting course. So it turned out great and it's been a huge success for us for a lot of years here at Eagle Crest. One of your top money makers, this thing brings money in for you guys. Well probably, you know, we look at return on investment for the dollar we spent, this would be certainly the, the home run that we hit right here with this baby. What's unique about this course? Well the fact that there's so much slope and undulation and that you really have to kind of think your way around the golf course. So I can see why I can see why they call this the pit of despair. There's a lot of challenge here, a lot of undulation. You have to navigate this huge bowl here, and uh, today the pin's quite a bit easier. It's in the bottom of the bowl. It's gonna come back. I sure hope. Come so. Come back. Oh, that was good. Nice birdie. Good job. Ooh, that looks good. Get in the hole! Oh! <laughs> nice that was close. Though. Thank you. There it is. The leader. That's how we get it done. There it is. Good job. It's good when there's no pressure on like this. Just having a good time. Having a good time. Well, that's the key. You, know, you kind of let loose and drink a beer. and That's not what golf's all about. Well, that's definitely part of what golf's about. The 19th hole. <laughs> the 19th hole. I right. say we hit it. All right, hey, that thanks, sounds buddy. good. Thank you. Redmond Municipal Airport is the aviation gateway to Central Oregon. Owned and operated by the city of Redmond, this newly expanded state-of-the-art terminal serves four main carriers, Alaska, American, Delta, and United. They offer daily direct service to Portland, Seattle, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Salt Lake City, and the mile-high city of Denver. Once on the ground, you have lots of rental car options. It's located adjacent to the Deschutes Fair and Expo, both strategically located in the heart of Central Oregon. I've heard for years that Central Oregon has some of the best fly fishing in the world. Let's reel in some more information with Stillwater Fly Shop. Welcome to our office here. Welcome to Central Oregon. We're gonna teach you a little bit about fly fishing today in the, the backyard that we call home. You mentioned the key word, little, which is what I know about fly fishing. Okay. I know very little about fly fishing. Well, that's all right. We'll, we'll cover some of the basics today about casting, presentation, what we're trying to, to do so that, you know, maybe we'll pick up some fish. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get you into some Gore-Tex waders. Do I look the part? You look the part. You look like you know what you're doing. Now. I'm feeling good. I'm ready to get my fly fish on. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Um, we'll go down into this one area that's kind of behind us. What's this river? This is the Fall River. And it's one of the spring creeks that are in Central Oregon. There's two major ones, the Metolius and this. It is so clear. I don't think yeah. I've ever seen a river so clear. So let's Beautiful. just go ahead and go on down into this area over here and we'll uh, we'll do a little casting 101. Okay. The basis of it is that you're going to have what's called uh, right above you is 12 o'clock. Okay. In front of you we want to stop the rod tip at about 10 o'clock behind you 2 o'clock. 
Oh, so no. am I letting go of this or am I hanging on to Eventually this? you will. Just hang on to it for now. So 10 to 2. 10 to 2. There you go. Keep going. Back and forth. Yep. Hey, you got it, John. I had no idea that we get to go for a nice hike too, Paul. Yeah, absolutely. That's kind of the enjoyment of it as well. You get to see a different part of the scenery and so kind of the same thing what we did before is we're gonna fish kind of this area right in here. Right into that section right there. So Paul, besides guiding fly fishing, what else do you guys do as a company? Well, primarily we're a, a fly fishing store. So we, I would say about 90% of everything that we sell retail wise, rods, reels, waders, boots, coats, etc., is uh, done through e-commerce. Paul, I think I found a new hobby. I do too. I thought you did really well. You picked up the sport really quickly and um, it looks like you were enjoying yourself. Thanks for coming out. We appreciate it. Thanks, Paul. We're at the Deschutes Fair and Expo, built by many as America's top county fair. Over the next few days, we'll experience the sights and sounds of this colorful event, and so will you. We begin our Deschutes Fair and Expo experience with a stunning aerial tour. So make sure your tray tables and seat backs are in their upright position, and enjoy the tour. Coming up, more fun at the Deschutes Fair and Expo, including a buck and rodeo and live music from one of America's favorites. It's another action packed day at the Deschutes Fair and Expo. Let's have some fun. This is Roxy, she's been our main source of contact for this entire week. We have a phenomenal facility here. We sit on a 320 acre site. Uh, we have a huge conference center with meeting space. Um, we also have a huge event center that we um, host sporting events, concerts, um, indoor motorcycle racing. Today we visited the beef barn, we visited the pigs, we visited the goats. Guys, I mean, this is truly an outdoor experience for people this week. Yes, this is. Um, we um, we have about 250,000 people that come through our gates during our annual fair. Um, families from all over, not just locally, but you know, they come to see us from all over the Pacific Northwest. Um, it's a great event. And your entertainment this week is really top notch. It is top notch. Who's here? Um, this week, Martina McBride, uh, America, Joe Nichols is tonight, and Hinder uh, was the first night here. So we had some really phenomenal entertainment. Roxy mentioned that America was in town this week. Well, last night, our crew was fortunate enough to attend their show. After two days in the desert sun, my skin began to turn red. And after three days 
in the desert fun I was looking at a riverbed And the story I told of a river that flowed Made me sad to think it was dead You see, I've been to the desert On a horse with no name If I could to be out of the rain In the desert, you can't remember your name Cause there ain't no one for to give you no pain Hey friends, this is Butch. Well, I'm the food and beverage manager here at the Shoots County Fairgrounds. Big job. It is. Just yeah. today alone, how many people did you feed? Uh, well, 1,400 in catering, and then we have concession stands outside. Um, eight concession stands. We do all the beer and wine and alcohol service here on the fairgrounds as well. What's it like to be in Central Oregon? Oh, I love it here. Yeah. Really love it. Uh, I think the weather, just the recreation, you know, the mountains, the skiing, the not too far to uh, go to a lake or you know go up and ski. You can do the same thing on the same day. What's the event you guys are doing tonight? And tell us about what you guys prepared. Uh, it was a uh, picnic for Les Schwab Company, a big tire company in the area, and we did a barbecue. Uh, we had burgers, hot dogs, chicken, baked beans, uh, potato salad, pasta salad, and topped it off with brownies. How many brownies did you guys make today? Because I saw that there were plates and plates of brownies. Well, we made 800 for them, and then we had another uh, 400 for last night. For so what do you do with the did. leftovers? No, uh, there isn't any. <laughs> <laughs> of the uh, fair we host a full rodeo um, so this is this is the NPRA the National Pro Rodeo Association that brings their rodeo here um, we host a number of rodeos throughout the year PRCA professional rodeo uh, comes here in September with the high desert stampede so um, we've done everything from Pee Wee rodeos on up to PRCA rodeos and these guys are tough these are definite athletes out here Location is, is really ideal in Central Oregon. It's yes. kind of smack in the middle of everything. We are. We're right in the heart of um, Central Oregon. Um, neighboring communities all the way around us. Um, we are the gateway to Central Oregon with our air service right here in Redmond next to us. We host about 400 events annually. Um, many weekends we have seven events going on concurrently. Um, the fair, of course, is huge, so we do, we do just a myriad of diverse events. Thanks for having us. Thanks for coming here. And remember always, Redmond, Bend, Oregon, America loves you. We're at DD Ranch and I'm happy to introduce Chef Betty and Jeff. Good to meet you guys. Good to meet you. I've been looking forward to meeting you because we're going to have a fabulous feast at your house and this is one of our sources. Yes, it is. Tell us about your relationship. Well, I've been coming to Dee Dee Ranch for about six years now. It was one of the very first stops on my culinary tour because I want to teach people about where their food comes from. I see so many different types of animals here. Mm -hmm. Run through the gamut. Well, uh, well, right now we're raising uh, Polt Hereford, Red Angus, and we've got about 40 sheep in our flock, about 20 lamb and 15 ewes. And so that's our primary source of revenue. The rest of these animals that you see around here in the petting zoo and are mostly just ornaments. Chef Betty, you talk about children and educating them. What, what sort of things do you educate them on a ranch? All these animals have been raised with, with love and care, and they've only had one bad day. One bad and day. If they, and if they take that away, I think that they will all make better food choices for the rest of their lives. And if we can make an impact early on, then my job is done. It's a great lesson. 
Now you have a special relationship with the animals. You say they communicate with you. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. <laughs> well, I, I'd say of all of them, the pigs are the most communicative. They uh, they let me know first thing in the morning and every evening that they're happy to see me. That's for sure. Those little babies are adorable <laughs> over there. Yeah. How well, old are they? Uh, those guys are about a month old. Uh, the little piglets, and that's probably as cute as they'll ever get. <laughs> I think. Uh, They'll start. All babies are cute, right? Once they turn into teenagers, they are very difficult to contain, that's for sure. So how does Dee Dee Ranch fit into our dinner? Um, we are actually going to get some lamb from them. We are going to make a lamb ragu. Certainly our goal is to make sure that when the animals are going in for process and they're going at the peak of their health, they're not limping in. And, and so um, part of that is getting out amongst them and, and we interact with them quite often, uh, whether we're moving them or feeding them. Up next, we visit local favorite Primal Cuts, and we learn about distilling spirits in downtown Bend. <laughs> Chef Betty, I know you're very familiar with Primal Cuts Meat Market, a place you come a lot, so I'm gonna let you take over the hosting duties of this segment, but tell us how it fits into tomorrow's dinner. Well, uh, Butcher Brian, the owner of Primal Cuts, uh, procures all of his meat from the local farms and ranches in the area. So he not only um, purchases the animals, but he then breaks them down, and then he makes all of his sausages, his different charcuterie, and so forth. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna get the charcuterie for our appetizers tomorrow. Sounds so, delicious. Yep, absolutely. I'll follow you. Let's go. Hi, Brian. How are you? I'm good. So good. I want to introduce you to John. This is Hi, my John. friend, Butcher Brian, hey, Brian. also known uh, nice as Brian Tremaine, the owner of Primal Cuts Meat Market. Oh, we yeah. are going to get okay. some charcuterie and some of Brian's pickles and mustards and also some cheese for our dinner tomorrow night. Well, we have a few uh, things over here. Uh, our roulettes that we make that you're going to be getting and uh, pancetta, a couple things like that. So uh, Work your magic. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Cotadilla cheese. cheese, so that's procured, um, that's made locally in Prineville. Uh, jalapeno, um, uh, jalapeno beer mu mustard. Beer mustard. Yep. So we're gonna go jump into the meat. What? Uh, okay. What so like? what do you, what do you have? Uh, calabrese. Okay. So, uh, it's pepperoni style. It's uh, gonna be a little bit spicy, a little bit of uh, acid to it. We've got the uh, prosciutto, awesome prosciutto. We'll have some of all of that. Brian makes all of his sausages here. Um, he makes a, a great hot dog. That's my husband loves brats, so he makes all different types of brats. Then he has the beer section. It's called Growler Fills, and so he has all these different beers on taps. He has um, beer, local beer, as well as kombucha. I love the old paper too. This reminds me when I was a kid and we used to go to the meat market. My mm -hmm. grandparents would take me in, we'd get all the fresh meat. Yeah, yeah, from the beginning this has been like, I wanted it to be the old fashioned style meat market that you get that service. You get like half the people, if you stay here for over an hour, you'll hear us. Like 90% of the people walking in, we know their names. It's awesome. Oh, it's, yeah, definitely, it's great. That's uh, my grandfather was in a grocery store he was the meat guy I remember going in watching him cut meat when I was a kid and different things like that and so then it's kind of skipped generations until me and so kind of just brought it back we're at Oregon spirit distillers for a little mixology 101. Distilling is a great uh, opportunity for us to take local 
uh, grown agriculture and turn it into a great commodity. And years ago, we started just by experimenting uh, with wheat and rye and malted barley and corn and making whiskey out of it. And it turned into a career. Six years ago, we started this fantastic business and uh, it allows us to accent what um, what is naturally around us. That's a family business too. You've, you've even named some of the liquors after your brothers, uncles. My brother uh, gave us the early seed money. His name is uh, C.W. Irwin uh, to get uh, the uh, founded. C.W. Irwin it's is it is uh, <laughs> bourbon, and then uh, my grandfather. So Otis Weber Wheat Whiskey is our second whiskey that we released. So you guys also make vodka and gin and absinthe. Yes, absolutely. We make two different gins. We make a dry gin called Scribbles and Mary Legs is a, a ancient style of gin. Uh, gin. It's a Geneva style gin. So in distilling, you take uh, grain and uh, we grind it into a flour. And in the uh, case of bourbon, it's mostly corn. It's got some wheat and rye and barley in it as well. As we heat it, alcohol uh, rises up through this column. It's a vapor. Um, it crosses over and then using cool water, we chill it again. And then we're gonna barrel it and we're gonna let it sit for four years. Let's check it out, I love yeah. the barrel rooms. It smells good in here. It smells fantastic. So this is our barrel room. This is uh, 350 barrels uh, that we've produced over the last four years. Um, here the alcohol will live for four years and during that time um, uh, the alcohol is going to extract flavor from the wood. I noticed the happy birthday <laughs> yeah. slide. What's that all about? Uh, I gave that to my daughter and when she turns 21 in 10 years uh, she will be <laughs> allowed. Uh, that is her very own barrel of rye whiskey. So Chef Betty has told me that she wants you to mix some crazy cocktail with gin or vodka for the dinner. Do you have something in mind? I think we're going to do something with the uh, Mary Legs Geneva gin. So now we make the magic. This is a fantastic cocktail. It's called the Mary Berry. And we've got uh, an Oregon grown strawberry and fresh basil. And uh, we're going to muddle it. We're going to add our Mary Legs Geneva, which is a uh, ancient style gin. We're gonna give it a quick shake. As only a pro can do. It's a fantastic fall cocktail. Perfect. Cheers. Delicious. So what's up with the Pringles poster on the wall over there? <laughs> Thank you for asking. Uh, so my father worked for Procter & Gamble in the late 60s and early 70s when I was born. So we have encased in resin uh, the first Pringle off the the line. That is awesome. I'm so <laughs> glad I asked. <laughs> Richard Irwin in 1967. It's awesome. Awesome drinks, great story, great to meet you. I'm so glad Thanks you came, John. Thank you. Coming up, we'll talk turkey at Rain Shadow Organics, then we're off to stomp grapes at Marigus Winery. Chef Betty joins us once again, and today we're at Rain Shadow Organics, located between Sisters and Redmond, Oregon. It's a busy time here. It's the harvest. Certainly, I know this is a very busy time of year for you guys, so thank you for having us today. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks What's going on here? What's happening? Well, we're harvesting. It's September, and we've got a full array of vegetables, and it's taking several days to get through all of our orders and getting everything out of the field. I notice there's no big fancy machinery. You guys are like going old school. You're picking by hand. This is yeah. just like salt of the earth. Yeah, everything is by hand. Everything is sorted by hand, washed by hand, packed, and delivered all by hand. How many different things are you growing here? I see so many different aisles and everything has a meaning, Chef Betty tells me. So we grow about 48 different kinds of vegetables and about 250 varieties of those vegetables. Now, Chef Betty, you're all about educating children. When you bring kids here, what do you teach them? Well, we teach them about um, really what Sara Lee does and to show them um, how um, vegetables are grown and raised and the fact that she has different types of animals here on the farm and what the animal's purpose is. And um, some children, some adults have never seen a live turkey. I saw some big turkeys down there. Yeah. Let's go check them out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the feathers. Yeah. Are they showing off? 
Uh, definitely. Those are the males. Anybody who's got their feathers out is a male. They spend most of their time gobbling and showing off. And I don't know when they get their eating done. It's like, how do you even grow? <laughs> All you do is strut. Come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> So I noticed you have greenhouses around the property mm -hmm. and other things are growing outside. What's, what's the purpose? So things that are sensitive to frost, basil, all of our squash, winter squash, summer squash, tomatillos, ground cherries, eggplants, tomatoes. Now you're going to be feeding us on Wednesday night. Yeah. What are we going to have from here? Um, we're going to have um, some of her greens and her tomatoes. We're going to take some of her wheat that she's milled into flour. So Chef Betty, we're going to work with some of this lettuce on Wednesday night? You bet. What are we going to do with it? So we're going to make it into a really nice salad with a uh, house-made vinaigrette. So you mentioned tomatoes? Oh yeah. Happen to be my favorite. Uh -huh. Well, we'll head that way. Heaven. This is heaven. <laughs> yep. Cherry tomatoes. My favorite. Mm, very cool. Mm, they're super sweet. It's like candy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Sarah Lee, what's new with Rain Shadow Organic? What's, what's coming up? Well, we're finishing one season and starting the next. And uh, this winter, we're really excited about building a commercial kitchen and farm stand on the property so that we can actually be open to the public and have people come and see where their food comes from and actually get their food here on the farm. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. We're at Marigus Winery and our timing is great. It's the annual Grape Stomp. Today's event is a blast. Tell us about your annual grape stop. You know, uh, we started this six years ago. Um, it's uh, kind of neat because my father and my uncle both did this when they were kids for commercial wine production. And you got live music going on. All we the do. locals come out. It's the, stomp the stomping is old school stomping. They're actually in the bucket stomping the grapes. <laughs> the competition was stiff. Yeah, it was. But let's taste your wine. You got it. I love wines. So I'm going to start with, uh, let's start with this bottle right here, which is a Malbec. Uh, we barrel age all of our wine. So that one, in fact, is sourced from a 14-acre vineyard just south of us. It's delicious. I love it. If you like really, really big reds, this is as big as you can make a Zin. Uh, we allowed a lot of raisining on the vine, which contributes to the flavor, making it jammy. And it's also going to be very intense with flavor, four and a half years in the barrel. really nice. Thank you. They're really good. Thank I'm you. surprised to find wineries in Central Oregon. I mean, you think of the Willamette Valley in Oregon, but it's, it's yes. surprising. And I think the only reason why it wasn't done is because there was a conception here that you couldn't grow grapes here. But it's uncannily like our family vineyard in Crete, which still exists, and my, my cousin runs it. Uh, and um, if you look at that picture up there, that's my Uncle John. And it looks just like Central Oregon. It's sandy loam soil, volcanic, just like it is here. And lo and behold, after eight years of investigating and actually having an outdoor vineyard laboratory, so to speak, you can grow really good grapes here. And the grapes that thrive at this vineyard, amazingly enough, not being able to grow grapes, Zinfandel and Cabernet Franc are amazing on the same. What's it like to live in Central Oregon? Oh, it's amazing. I Great almost place said to raise it rocks, kids, right? Because there's Smith Rock right behind us. <laughs> yeah, your location is awesome. Yeah, thank one you. One of the seven wonders of Oregon. This is one of the, we'll call this the eighth wonder. Of okay, Oregon. I'll take it. Yeah. Coming up on Next Stop, see how gelato is made, and we'll bring everything together at an amazing feast with Chef Betty. Every great dinner ends with a scrumptious dessert. On tonight's menu, Bonta Gelato. What are we doing here, Julie? Um, we are going to dump uh, this base into the batch freezer. And this is a vanilla bourbon pecan. Oh. All right, so this is just gonna go straight in the machine. Difference between gelato and ice cream. Uh, main difference is gelato is made mostly with milk. Um, I can't actually legally call it ice cream. 
because it doesn't meet the minimum butterfat requirement to call it ice cream. So it has about 6% butterfat. But people love friends. your gelato. That's it why is. we're here. Yeah, we just opened a retail shop this spring. And so that we originally started doing wholesale, uh, supplying to grocery chains, restaurants in the area. And then this last year, we just opened our retail shop. So that has really kind of spurred the other parts of our business as well. First, I'm just gonna get the product out of the machine. And then I'll show you the folding process. But we'll get the majority of it out. So what we're gonna do now, fold in pecans. Kind of uniform distribution. That looks yummy. It is. You want to try it? I do. Yeah, go for it. So you this is dessert. This is dessert. Dessert is served. Oh my. The guests are in for a treat. It's the main event, a feast at Chef Betty's home, bringing together all the local ingredients we featured this week. From farm to Chef Betty's table, we go. Thank you so much for having us in your home tonight. My pleasure. It's been such fun working with you this week, but we haven't talked about the well-traveled fork. Okay, let's. Tell us about it. Well, um, I am originally from Southern California, where I was a caterer for several decades. And in the last few years I was there, I taught an after-school cooking class to elementary school children. And these children thought that lettuce came in a bag, <laughs> that chickens had nuggets, and that pasta came in a box. And I really wanted people to understand the source of their food, that vegetables grow in the ground, that somebody raises um, with care a pig and a steer to turn into our, our dinner. And from that came our cooking classes because people didn't know what to do with grass-fed meat. And I think what I'm most proud of now is that we run six different culinary camps for children during, during the summer. That's wonderful. Yeah, so it's, it's all about teaching people about local food and the source of their food and then what to do with it. So you and Jeff built this house? Yes. Is this like your dream kitchen? It, I, I put in just about everything I wanted, so yeah. Ladies, <laughs> eat your heart out. No, this is beautiful. Thank you. But one thing that kind of pops out to me is the 1920 oven over there. Yeah, so um, that is 1920 Wedgwood. It was my sister-in-law's. Well, everything smells amazing. Run through the dinner again real quick. So um, we are going to start with a charcuterie plate. Um, so we purchased all of that from uh, Butcher Brian yesterday at Promo Cuts. Um, and then we're going to have a lamb bolognese um, and with pasta. And so we got the ground lamb from Dee Dee Ranch. Um, we're also going to have a beautiful salad where I got all the greens and the tomatoes um, from Sara Lee at Rain Shadow Organics. And then our dessert is going to be some wonderful, wonderful um, bonte gelato. I helped so, a little bit with that, yeah. just oh. so you know. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, um, our spirits is going to be a wonderful cocktail um, from Oregon Spirit Distillers. And our wine tonight is from our friends um, Doug and Gina Marigus at um, Marigus Wineries. Thanks so much for joining us on Next Stop from Central Oregon, where agriculinary tourism is alive and well. I don't think I've ever been to a destination anywhere in the world where the local community supports each other so much. It's pretty awesome. Thanks also to this show's sponsor, the Central Oregon Visitors Association and Alaska Airlines. Next Stop, where will we take you next? Make good memories, everybody.
Come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Tell your kids that's it. I made turkeys talk. <laughs> I know, I'm Welcome to another edition of Awkward Moments in the Kitchen with Julie. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, I it's all resist. good. It's all good. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Lots of awkward moments in my world. <laughs>